bevel gear, rack and pinion gear, and worm gear. This video will briefly describe each type beginning with the bevel gear. This video, part 4, is the final one in the series. First, let's recall what a bevel is. You are likely familiar with a beveled edge as sloping away from its surface as shown here. It can be found in chisels, glass, and wood. Here is an example when applied to gears. Notice how the teeth slope away from the surface. Also, the two gears are at right angles to each other. Most commonly, two bevel gears are at this 90 degree angle, although other angles are possible. The teeth can be straight or spiral like this. In this spiral bevel gear, the teeth are not straight but helical. Another variation looks like this and this. These are called hypoid gears and found in card differentials. More about this later. For an application, let's look at this hand drill. The larger gear is at a right angle to the smaller one. The larger gear has a handle, so it will be the driver. The motor will be the person turning it. The small gear is the driven gear. The shaft of the small gear leads to a chuck which holds a drill bit. We can easily find the gear ratio from the number of teeth on each gear. I have estimated the large one to have 55 teeth and the small one to have 10 teeth. This gives a gear ratio of 55 to 10 or 5.5 to 1. As the driver turns once, the driven will turn 5.5 times. This will be a case of gearing up since the driven goes faster than the driver. The person operating this drill can easily turn the driver quite quickly so that the driven and the drill bit will rotate very quickly as shown in this clip. An electric hand drill uses a beveled chuck key to tighten drill bits in the chuck. These drills that need chuck keys are disappearing and are being replaced by keyless drills like this. The collar is tightened by hand. This clip shows using a chuck key on a small drill press. This is a small drill press. An electric hand drill goes on top. The collar has teeth at right angles to its face, making it a crown gear. The chuck key has a bevel profile it fills into the drill chuck and a few turns tightens the drill bit in place. Bevel gears can be in combinations like this. This combination was present in a previous video showing the gear train that controlled the hands of a clock in a clock tower. Here it is again inside a grandfather clock. Here is a short video about beveled gears. Gears transfer power. Bevel gears are used when the power of one shaft must be transmitted at a different angle to another shaft, often at a right angle. The most common example of bevel gears at work is an automobile differential, where the drive shaft of the motor must transfer its power at a right angle to the axle of the wheels. The bevel gears, in the example here, have the same diameter and the same number of teeth so they will each turn at the same rate. The differential in the car just mentioned is shown more clearly here. Consider these wheels which are negotiating a turn. It is clear that the left wheel has to travel more distance compared to the right wheel. This means the left wheel has to rotate at a higher speed. If these wheels were connected using a solid shaft as shown, the wheels would have to slip to accomplish the turn. This is exactly where the differential comes. The ingenious mechanism in a differential allows left and right wheels to turn at different RPM while transferring power to both wheels. Worm gears. A worm gear, more properly called a worm drive, consists of two parts as shown in this nice Wikipedia photo. The top part with a handle is the worm and it turns the gear. Let me spell it out here. The worm drive 
consists of a worm and a worm gear. The worm is a shaft with a helical or spiral thread, and the, the worm gear is the normal spur gear we have seen before. The terminology varies, however, with the worm also known as the worm screw and the worm gear as the worm wheel. Here's a combination of three different worm drives. The worm drives the gear. The worm can go in either direction and cause the gear to go forward or reverse, but the gear can never make the worm turn. The angle of the worm is shallow and so the gear is held in place by the friction between the two gears. This can act as a brake or locking system and is found in conveyor systems. Here is an animation of its operation. The shaft of the worm will always have a motor turning it, so it is the driver. The gear will always be the driven. Here is a wooden version. The vertical metal rod is turned and so can be used to operate some item. The common use of worm drives is on the tuners on acoustic guitars. This clip will show a person using the uh, worm drive to tune his guitar. But it tune up. Perfect. Here's a hose clamp that contains a worm inside there inside the housing. So there isn't a worm gear, but the slots in here act like the slots in the worm gear. And once we get it started in the worm and turn the worm, then This hose clamp will close as much as needed around the hose. We can see it coming out the back like that. So that's a nice application of at least the worm. One full rotation of the worm will move the worm gear by one tooth. Watch this pin as it makes one full turn while the gear moves only one tooth at a time. This can lead to large ratios like 20 to 1 or more, which means that a large torque is produced on the shaft of the worm gear. That is, the twisting or rotating force on the shaft is large, which means this system can lift heavy loads or turn heavy items. Let's look at the wiper blades on a car. It takes a lot of force to accelerate the wiper blades back and forth across the windshield so quickly. The large torque of a worm drive is ideal for this application. Uh, first, let's look at this simulation. The wiper blades are understood to be attached to the two vertical bars. A motor turns this shaft, which is connected to the worm inside the housing, and the worm in turn turns the worm gear. Through the linkages, the wipers, which are in tandem, then get moved back and forth. This person is going to show a worm drive taken from an actual wiper assembly from a car. The output of this electric motor goes straight to a worm gear. What that worm gear does is it spins this white ring gear. And the purpose of this setup here is to multiply the torque of this little motor. This is a worm drive from wipers that go opposite to each other. The worm here looks awfully small. The automatic windows in a car also operate by a small motor turning, uh, running a worm drive. We now turn to the rack and pinion system. This gear system consists of a bar with teeth on the top called a rack and the regular spur gear which is called a pinion here. This system can convert rotational motion to linear motion or linear motion into rotational motion. If the rack is fixed in place, the motor turning the pinion 
forces the pinion to move along the track, as happens in rack railways and stair lifts. These will be shown later. If the pinion is fixed, the rotation of the pinion will cause the rack to shift left and right side to side as used in car steering wheels and in scales. Now, for example, here's a scale. A is the load to be weighed. It pushes down so that the lever B, in conjunction with the spring C, causes the rack D to move, and this makes the pinion rotate. The pinion is attached to the dial, so the dial will rotate to show the weight. In this spring scale, the load pulls down on the springs. The rack moves, causing the pinion to rotate. Since the pointer is attached to the pinion, its rotation will show the number on the dial. In a car, when you turn the steering wheel, which is connected to a pinion, the pinion makes the rack shift side to side to swivel the car wheels left or right. In this picture, we see the ends of the rack connected to tie rods, which do the turning of the wheels. And here's a GIF animation showing the process. Here is a stair lift which uses the rack and pinion, but now the rack is fixed in place, so the pinion, as it turns, is forced to move along the rack, which brings the chair with it. This is shown on a large scale in rack railways, also called cog trains. Here is the basic unit. The middle rack is fixed. The motor that turns the pinion forces the pinion, and thus the rail cars, to move along the track. The wheels roll on the outside rails. They are primarily used to go up steep slopes, although they can be used in normal transportation as shown here. Notice the rack between the rails on which the wheels move. Here is a rack railway in Switzerland. Here is one from the driver's view going up a steep grade in the Swiss Alps. A final example is their use in lock gates on smaller canals. Here we see the rack and the pinion. The pinion is being driven by a similar gear train that we saw in part one. The small gear driver on top that can be turned by a person and the large driven gear. The large torque or twisting force produced by the large gear will turn the pinion, which then moves the rack up or down, and so move the gate. This clip shows it in action. This is a person in England who is moving his boat through locks in a small canal and operates the gates by himself. So this ends the rack and pinion system and also brings an end to the video on other types of gears.